they're really not treating him right. He's not wrong that they're mistreating him in, in prison. So let's talk about going numb during anal. Uh, my name is Ryan. I'm 25 year old male. Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Number is 818-253-1693 for these great voice messages that you send me and also the emails at uh, drdrewafterdark at gmail.com and store.ymhstudios.com. Rational Revolution, everybody. Uh, new t-shirts. There they are. Shirtless Drew. Uh, what's the other one? We've got course the mug which will be eternal well i mean well this mug is for the freedom fighters out there the freedom to be rational again rational revolution everyone eternal those are eternal iconographies and then let's get the other one the how effing dare you which is um something i say to Nadav all the time and i will continue and to the, say and never to any is that true i never say it because any never uh, says anything that makes me <laughs> need to say that Interesting. Huh? Yeah, How any, fascinating. Any, any sort of got my back, I think is what hmm. we're saying here. You think I don't have your back? Yeah, no. you have my No, no, he no, he has my back. <laughs> he has my back. He just doesn't mind uh hanging me out to dry a little bit occasionally it's okay not that i don't deserve it but how often dare you when you do it that's all i'm saying that's fair um let's go to a couple voice messages straight off the top here let's do that sure hey dr mommy and booth jeans um so i'm 25 mm -hmm. i i uh, vape a lot mm -hmm. i used to smoke and i just coughed up a little bit of blood it was mixed with mucus it wasn't that that much it was like a just a little bit inside the mucus. It happened a few, a few times. Like the way he's minimizing um, it. It's no big deal. It's no know, big I deal. I just want to know, is that like, if I was coughing particularly violently, is that yeah. what would cause it to bleed? Yes. Or, you know, do I just have, have cancer? Yeah, thanks for thanks for hearing me out. Um, yeah. This time beat me. You bet I'm coming up in May. Right. So, uh, my friend, here's the deal. Uh, you're right that bronchitis and, and aggressive coughing is probably the most common cause of blood in the sputum at your age group. But you can't just assume that, right? You need a chest x-ray. Somebody needs to work you up. Somebody needs to listen to your lungs. Because it can be all kinds of things, frankly, but it can also be cancer. Unusually, it'd be pretty pretty rare. Very unlikely, but you need proper medical evaluation. Coughing up blood is never, you know, if you bleeding from your gums or from your nose or something, that, that's kind of common. But coughing up blood, no, no, no. That's something that needs to be evaluated. Another one. Hi, Dr. Drew. Hi, hey. Booth Boys. This hey. is Erica from South Carolina. Erica. Um, how do you know when you come? For guys, pretty typical. You have your ejaculation. You come. You squirt white, whatever. Great. I'm not a superstar female athlete. I don't squirt. I don't do any of that. I know when sex feels good, and sometimes I have extra discharge, but I don't know if there's a correlation to know if I've actually – hit my climax or not um that would be great oh my god i was listening a few orgasm. episodes Correct. back and Correct. you guys mentioned some recommendations from your fans i think it would be cool to interview a sex therapist if you haven't i'm intermittently catching up with some of the episodes episodes i haven't over the years but i'd love to hear from a sex therapist Okay. Thanks so much. Have a okay. good day. You Erica, bet your ass. I'm coming up in May. Erica, you do not need a sex therapist for this issue. This is very common in young women. They have not had an orgasm, right? And it's it's women are a wide spectrum of physiology. Some women have an orgasm at the beginning of intercourse and can have 20 orgasms. Some women, it's extremely difficult for them to orgasm. They need a lot of direct stimulation, but of a certain type, and they have to kind of figure out how to get that stimulation. And more than anything else, it really involves you kind of experimenting. You're, you're, you are not going to have an orgasm with intercourse. That is not going to happen. You have to like disavow yourself of that expectation. You're going to need some kind of direct stimulation, either your own hand or someone's mouth uh, or a, a sex toy. They have so many clever, you know, crazy different kinds of sex toys these days. You can find all kinds of things you could experiment with. Sometimes... Uh, I know a lot of women have figured out how to do this by getting under the spigot of a bathtub. Like literally, you guys know what I'm talking about? Like push I've your seen those videos, yeah. Like push your butt up to until you're right under the spigot and let the spigot hit directly on the clitoris. And it's a it's an interesting thing. 
if you're not highly uh, androgenized, so women tend to go a spectrum from highly estrogenized, meaning there's a lot of receptivity, and but there's not a lot of drive to orgasm, and highly androgenized, where they can be very similar to males in terms of their drive and the drive to orgasm and the tendency to masturbate. People on your end, uh, what's her name, Erica, will find masturbation sort of uncomfortable and weird, and you wouldn't, you don't know how to motivate yourself to do it. Quite literally, that motivation just isn't there because the lack of androgen. Not to say that that's abnormal, that's just your physiology. And so so uh, what you need to do is kind of experiment with things. Now, in I've had ex- a lot of experience talking to people about these things over time. And most women, um, they become more able to have orgasm as they get older. But the other thing, now this is kind of an interesting phenomenon, that for women like you, which is very common, you need to have some sort of an experience of intimacy, if that's if you get what I'm saying. So in other words, having sex is about these feelings of connection and intimacy, which you can do by yourself. It's why women, when they coach each other up, will go, well, get a bubble bath and light some candles and learn how to relax with this, but also how to sort of conjure up sense of closeness is really what it's all about. And, and for some women, they can never do it. They have to really work with a partner to be able to do it because uh, you need those feelings of intimate connectedness in order for it to kind of make sense to you. So um, other thing is, if you're on birth control pills, that could be working against you. So if you're on some sort of hormonal, hormonal contraceptive or medication, and people often don't think about this, the, particularly the psychotropic medications, the SSRIs, that kind of thing, really can reduce your ability to ever, ever get there. So uh, gentlemen, did that all make sense? Yeah, I think so. Did I miss anything that you've uh, tried or attempted or run into in your in your travels? You mean to make a girl orgasm? That there's this spectrum, right? And that some women are sort of way over, you know, yeah. in this other area where where they need a lot of they got to figure it out and it and it's, you know, part of the maturation process and part of the ability to conjure the the feeling states that are associated with these arousal systems. It's 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 challenging for some women. And, you know, it's funny when I talk to the women that are the women that are multi-orgasmic, they literally believe that the women that have difficulty orgasming are lying. They either think they're, no, 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 I'm sorry, it's the other way around. The ones that are, have difficulty orgasm think that the multi-orgasmic are lying. Remember we dealt with this with um, Kelsey Cook? Kelsey Cook? Yeah. And they she was sort of disdained and being told that she was a liar and stuff because she could have 10 orgasms. I think Susan thought she was a liar. I think Susan even brought that up. That's right. And, and uh and then the women on the multi-orgasmic part just feel like women haven't figured it out yet. You just don't understand. It's so easy. Why can't you just figure it out? It's, it's different biology. Men are all pretty much the same biology. We're sort of a, you know, it's just a volume switch really for us, not a difference in biological expression. For women, it's progesterone, estrogen, testosterone all have varying effects on the system. So it's, it's, it's and, and even the wiring sort of neurobiologically is different woman to woman. And so you got to get, you just got to get used to that and adapt to your own system. What's that, Any? I'm sorry I interrupted you. Oh, no, I was interrupting you. I, I don't even remember what I was saying. Okay. You did have a question, though, did you not? Do you have something, a comment did, or something? I did have a question. Yeah. Uh, Nadav and I were talking today, and Heather actually, and we were, we said something about like, I think I said, oh, but you know me, I'm crazy. And uh, Nadal was like, well, I mean, everyone's like, I, I'd like to believe that everyone's a little bit crazy, right? And I'm right. Like, I mean, yeah, I'd like to believe that, but no. And he's like, really, you don't think everybody has like a little bit of crazy? And I said, no, I, I think that um, I think everybody has flaws. I think everybody, you know, has inconsistencies. There's there's things that are weird about people, but not crazy. OK, crazy to me means like my version of of reality is yeah. so skewed compared to the majority of people. Right. So and I think I fall into that category. I think a lot of people fall into that category. So, so for me, cra- crazy, a pejorative term, right? That's what I'm right. going to use it because we used to, the patients used to use it and then we used to use it in the psych hospital all the time, just as a sort of a, you're just trying to take the heat off what was going on in people. Hey, don't be so crazy. Come on. And, and I don't, so I don't think crazy is just pejorative, but anyway, we'll use it. Um, for me, real crazy is when you have trouble functioning, right? Is if you have difficulty work, school, friends and family, romantic relationships, legal problems, affecting your health, that's, that is now that's crazy, right? 
just having oddities or peculiarities or differences from from the norm we could call that crazy right because it's not it's not an a real real mental health is accepting reality on reality's terms right so being able to see reality reflect reality think about reality in realistic ways and then adapt to it realistically and then i'm going to put a third thing on here regulate your emotions to your own satisfaction like the ability to feel okay seeing reality not being overwhelmed by it changing and adapting to it and regulating in a cohesive way and i'll even put a fourth thing on there being fully integrated as a person like really accepting all parts of yourself and making sure all parts of yourself are all all present now can it can the average person do that absolutely not (laughs) absolutely not most people have some stuff somewhere along the line. The most common probably being parts of the self are kind of left behind or not present because if we all have shit going on in our childhood, number one, particularly in the last 40 years. And then number two, think how much anxiety and depression there is out there in the world. That's not regulating effectively. So most people have some have either have or have had some experience with that. Then I'm going to layer in another crazy element, which is when we're in adolescence, we tend to have bizarre thinking. We, there's lots of bizarre thinking that goes on during adolescence, and that's normal. So, that, so I think I think any is more right than wrong. How about that? Does that fit, or did I say too many things to, for you guys to follow me? Um, yes, so I, I suppose. <laughs> so I, I think I think what what you were defining as crazy, which is I guess I just I'm using a stupid term, but yeah, I didn't mean crazy in the sense of like can't function. I can't function. Yeah, Correct. Yeah. Like I don't mean you know yeah, you're talking about re- unstable, it, like, I guess. Like an aspect that's severely wrong. No, no, no. He's saying yeah, he's, I don't mean that. He doesn't mean he's saying like you maybe have weird thoughts about reality or you don't see reality the way other people do it or you react to things differently. Yes, like yeah. like I like I asked a question on my story the other day. Uh, I said do you think that you don't get it, quote, quote, and as in the thing that everybody else gets. Mm. That's like a a really weird question for, I think, some people. Like a lot of people are going to be like, what do you even mean? Like, of course I get it. Get what? But a lot of people, myself included, will say no because they feel like there's a world that everybody else is living in that you've never been a part of. Right. That, that, that that's the type of crazy that I'm talking about where yeah. it's not even a bad thing necessarily. I don't, I don't say crazy as in no one can fuck with you. Like yeah. you're not, you can't be a person's friend. I just mean crazy as in you live a different reality than yeah. pretty much and, everybody and, else. And a lot of that feeling of course comes from the childhood stuff we've talked about before. Right. And, and just, it's, it's sometimes as simple as, you know, I, we didn't really, I don't know if we've dug into Dom's childhood, certainly not as much, but just the fact that he didn't have the experience you had, makes you see and feel differently about the circumstances that you're both are in. You're both in the same place and yet you feel differently about it because he can't really understand because you, you feel like he can't understand because he's not experienced what he experienced. Is it like that? Uh, I, I feel like he understands. That's that's the funny thing about this question is not like, I don't think either of us think that it's, it would be a bad thing to be crazy. That's actually the, the funniest thing of this. Yeah. My question is why he got upset when I said, "Oh, I think a lot of people are crazy, oh. myself included." I was like, um, "I think he's thinking think, more pejoratively about the term." It, what do you say? Well, no, 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 because I was saying I think I'm crazy. I think uh, Christina has some crazy. Yeah. I think Bert has some crazy. I have some crazy. Yeah, I don't think you. I, I don't see I it in some. you. I, I always I had, I had panic attacks, anxiety, depression, I, OCD. I mean, it's all crazy. That's all crazy. I don't know, yeah. I, but but it's, but not, it's adaptive. But, I use it. I use it in a way that's adaptive, and so so these excess is crazy you know freud used to define crazy as just excess that was neurosis just excess of something and so yeah i have lots of excess and uh, but i use it i adapt it i shape it and i can regulate it a little bit and that that's where crazy becomes sometimes useful so so i that's why again why i don't think of crazy as a pejorative term nadav what were you talking about no i i mean like uh I, I do agree that it was a weird reaction that I had that I don't quite understand that when <laughs> any said like, yeah, man, like this person's crazy. Like, you know, Christina's got a little crazy. Uh, Bert's got a little crazy. Christina wore a diaper then, onto this show. <laughs> and then, and then Bert called me drunk to come build buy a condo with him. That's crazy. Right. And then I was, and then any said that I wasn't crazy and I started getting immediately defensive, which I think like, yes, I am crazy. How dare little, you? Cra- it's a little crazy. That is a little crazy. It's there you are. You, you've sort of made your own point, but, but I'm not sure why, like, why did I react that way? Is it like, Oh, I won't be part of the club. Like, am I just like, am I uh, reverting back to some sort of weird childhood thing? 
that you want to be crazy? That, that yes. I'm upset like, that I, I said that he was not crazy and he got upset with I that. I took it offensively. Wow. So you, you've, so to be in the out group for you is especially challenging. Oh, no, because you know what? I have the self-deprecation like very heavily woven into my personality. And yeah. when anyone tries to imply I'm not a piece of shit, it makes me mad. <laughs> That's what it is. Wow. Figured it out. Wow. And well, there so you go. there you go. And that is crazy. That's what I'm talking right. about, dude. So, Welcome to the fucking show. So it's there not you crazy. Are. It's, it's insecure. There's insecurities. No, that's there. crazy to be. To oh be that's crazy because to, because it, you know part of crazy is also being irrational, and that's so freaking irrational that he gets mad with you for telling you to, for giving you a compliment for giving Nadav a compliment. He gets mad with gets mad at any. Yeah. Um, Hmm, what are we going to do with that? So are you feeling any better about yourself these days? I mean, yeah, like uh, uh, I think because when I was in therapy, that was a thing that we that we tackled a bit and I definitely got a lot better at it. Um, but I haven't been in therapy since I moved. And so, so, so I'm guessing the therapist, back a bit. I'm guessing the therapist when you brought this up said, oh, so you think you're a piece of shit? He was like, I'm, I'm baffled by how many times you've called yourself a piece there of you shit go. during this session. There you go. <laughs> So he's just reflecting it back to you, right? Yeah. And what did you say? Well, I am a piece of shit. I was just like, yeah, what's your fucking deal, guy? I'm mad at you. I'm <laughs> mad at the therapist. Can't you see me? I'm mad at the therapist. <laughs> is this because of the way your parents treated you? Uh, I mean, we dug a little deeper and we found out, yep, that had something to do with it. Wow. And yeah. then how about your peers? Did they get into this as well? Do you, like, did something happen at school mm, and things? No. I, Were you bullied or anything? No. Did no, you I bully? Went to, I went to a private Jewish school. Like, they're, like we all kind of really got along. Hmm. Did you ever bully anybody else? I don't think I did. I mean, you know what? Uh -oh. I mean, I'd bully some of my closest friends, but that's just friends fucking around. Uh -huh. Like, give, you, an ex give an example. I'll give you an example. I yeah. mean, like, one of my best friends, like, <laughs> we said in Judaic studies class. How old are you at this time? Uh, I want to say maybe 10th or 11th grade. Okay, so you're like 15 or something, 16. Yeah, and so uh, I was sitting, you know, one of my best friends was in the class with me, and I would just take a marker, and I would, like, write on his forearm when the teacher wasn't looking and I would just keep doing it until he exploded and, and then he got kicked out of class. That's, yeah. not, that's not bullying. That's funny. Yeah, right? Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. The same behavior seemed to yeah, be going on today. I wonder today. how that story goes for that kid. I wonder if he tells it the same. Oh, he hated it. <laughs> how would he? he I still hang out Well, with any them. great question. I mean, not now because I moved. <laughs> no, any brilliant, brilliant point. How, how do you think he would tell it? Uh, you know what's funny is that when I bring it up, because he's someone that gets mad real fast, yeah. and whenever I bring that up, boy, does he get mad real fast. Yeah. And, I, and then I just remind him, I'm like, hey, man, I'm the best friend you ever had. And then that makes him even more mad. <laughs> yeah, like, really, this is my best friend? It's like, funny that you don't get why I do this to you. That's hilarious. That's the funniest part No, yeah, dude, look, I know I have a short fuse. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have a short fuse, and I know how fun it is for you because it's fun for me, too, when I do it to other people. <laughs> I get it, dude. I get uh, it. Now it's getting a little weird. I'm a little crazy, right? All right. Let's do a voice message. I need to get away from you guys. You guys are freaking me out a little bit. Voice message. Come on. Here we go. Hello, Dr. Drew. This is uh, Oliver from Massachusetts. Oliver. Um, I'm just calling because I have uh, this red uh, puffy stuff on my face, and it looks like, well, the doctors tell me it's rosacea, but mm. they're not really 100% sure, mm. but... um. I just noticed that whenever I uh, drink alcohol or uh, get really stressed out, it really pops up a bunch, mm -hmm. like on my forehead and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I'm just wondering if you have any advice as to what I should do to, you know, not get the stuff on my face all the time. Yeah, right. there. I'm, Thanks. You, Piss on me, beat me. Of course. And um, uh, you bet I'm coming up in you May. You bet. You bet I will be. So, God, I almost feel like maybe one of the upcoming shows we ought to we just got to bring uh, Ed Asner back because they people wherever I go, people greet me with that one. So just as an aside, some maybe somewhere down the road here, let's just bring that video back. Um, not today, um, but uh, so hmm. Uh, I lost my train of thought completely. Uh, whenever he drinks. He okay, so so here's my train of thought. So you have been seeing doctors; they've given you a diagnosis. Rosacea is a highly treatable condition highly treatable and why they're not treating you i don't understand it can be treated with antibiotics it can be treated with topical agents uh, metronidazole doxycycline all kinds of things work for it have they tried treatment a uh, and b if they have and it hasn't worked you should keep going back because rosacea is quite treatable rosacea is this sort of kind of pustular red development in the malar region and nose 
It can also be a sign of something else, like you could have a lupus type syndrome coming on, but a young males don't get lupus typically unless you're on some strange medication. Sometimes medication can cause a lupus syndrome in males. Not to say lupus never happens in males. It does occasionally. And so make sure they're looking out for that. But you stay with the physicians. It's a, it's a real medical problem. And it's also unpleasant when you're a young man to have this big red blotchy outbreak on your nose and face. Well, anxiety and depression can show up in all kinds of ways. And people don't realize that physical symptoms like headaches, teeth grinding, stomach problems, even spending too much time on online or sleeping too much or too little, eating too much or too little, all of these things Stress can show up in a lot of different ways. And it's just a reminder to take care of yourself. And therapy can be one of those ways. We call this somatizing when our body is telling the story. Maybe try some therapy. That's right. That's a sign that you could benefit from it. And BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't even have to see anyone if you don't want to. You don't have to get on camera. You certainly don't have to worry about the discomfort of going to a waiting room. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see if online therapy can help you lower stress. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and the Dr. Drew After Dark listeners will get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash after dark. That is B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash after dark. Time is money. Do not waste either with repeated trips to the post office. It makes no sense because with stamps.com, you can skip the trip and focus on how to take your business or whatever you're working on to the next level. Stamps.com lets you print official postage right from your computer, saves you money, saves you time. You can spend less time at the post office and more time making your customers happy if that's what you want to do or making your family happy, whatever. Don't waste time at the post office. Stamps.com saves you time, money, stress. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your own computer. Whether you're an office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop, or a full-blown warehouse shipping out orders, Stamps.com will make your life easier. All you need is a computer and a printer, no special supplies, no special equipment. You're up and running in minutes, printing official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send it. Stop overpaying for shipping with Stamps.com. Sign up at stamps.com slash Dr. Drew for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale, no long-term commitments or contracts. That is stamps.com slash Dr. Drew. And thank you to stamps.com for sponsoring our show. Uh, bloody balls. Uh, Dr. Drew, please touch my camera through the fence. See, we revisited that one. Um, I have an issue. Also, the people are a lot of the ta-ta R word coming back at me these days. Uh, people have, I don't know, they have no resistance to saying that. The people love it. They do. Ta-ta, R word. I have an issue with these small blood blister type things on my fun bags. They go away and more pop back. I had a couple pop and they do not stop bleeding. They are pretty small. While, while I'm reading this, look up four dice spots. F-O-R-D-Y-C-E. Pretty small and they're usually one to two close together side. But I thought maybe when I rearranged my nuts i might be pinching them like it's actually a blood blister i doubt it uh should i be concerned viva la revolucione racionale i agree with that look uh there you are uh look look at four day spots testicle look. now okay so we can't show this so yeah. just uh explain what we're seeing we're seeing things that kind of look like little zits there you go there's a four day spot you can show that can't you show that no. White spots you don't even you can't even identify that as a testicle it looks it looks like you just can a, in the picture right next to it yeah, well, well, don't cut that one out. Oh. There you go. See that. Um, and so that's a four day spot. And sometimes they can be a little discolored. And if you you shouldn't do anything to them, they will come and go. Uh, and they are normal. And uh, look them up online. Four dice is F O R D Y C E. Check that out. Fucking yikes. Yeah, man. I've <laughs> uh, been using liver support supplements for over 10 years. I'm a daily drinker of beer. These supplements seem to fool the blood panels on the levels of the liver enzymes, uh, the ALT and AST aspartate amino transferase etc of which elevated levels can indicate can indicate early liver disease from alcohol consumption and potentially cirrhosis uh, my f question is do supplements actually work in prolonging the liver's health or they simply mask the blood panel results asking for a friend who whose name rhymes with burnt chrysler um 
So these supplements do absolutely nothing. Uh, that essentially the difference between like a, you know, a, a missile launcher and a pop gun, um, the alcohol is a direct, uh, essentially poison to the liver cells. It can cause initially a fatty metamorphosis. The cells are inflamed essentially, and as such, they dysfunction. And as they dysfunction, they can start to die and they get apoptosis. As they die, inflammatory c- cells come in and those cells try to clean it up. But sometimes, in about 20% of individuals with alcoholic liver disease or so, those cells that come in to clean up the inflammation lay down scar. That scar is called cirrhosis. That's essentially the way it works. Uh, you can also get alcoholic hepatitis, which is somewhat a different process, but it is absolutely associated with cirrhosis down the line. The blood tests are a essentially worthless way to assess alcoholic liver disease. The best way to assess alcoholic liver disease is physical examination, which the doctor will feel the liver, and we can tell whether it's enlarged or hard, or there's a sharp edge or a nodular edge. Sharp edge. And by the way, people with advanced cirrhosis have normal liver tests on the ALT and AST, but eventually they start to have synthetic dysfunction, so the serum proteins start to drop. They get clotting system abnormalities. You're looking up cirrhosis? Liver what? Sharp edge. Oh, uh, it's something you that feel. That confused me when you yeah, said What does that mean? It's, uh, that's a sharp edge there in that diagram. See the guy's, the doctor's hand is there? Mm-hmm. You can feel that sharp edge kind of, it flips by your hand. Like you, this part, the point? Yeah, the, the, well, all the way along, actually, uh, under the rib cage. And uh, you have to have a lot of experience to be able to kind of feel that. And uh, yeah, you can feel all kinds of things. You can check out, you can the span the liver, you can look for, you know, telangiectasias and palmar erythema and other signs that you have liver disease, but the blood tests really are, are not a screening instrument. They're one of the worst ways. As someone that treated thousands of alcoholics, blood tests never, not never, but they were one of the least useful part of my, of my uh, only for people that had advanced end-stage liver disease is it something I had to follow. Now, uh, sometimes I would have to check out liver dysfunction. In other words, they're literally the nitrogenous, so you're, you can develop what's called hepatic encephalopathy where the blood, the liver can't even clear what comes out of the bacteria from your colon. Your bacteria, the colon of your bacteria produce nit- some nitrogenous material and that can that goes to the liver normally and is cleared up right away. But in, with liver disease, with alcoholic liver disease, it doesn't clear. So we have to give you things like lactulose to clear those bacteria out because you will st- start having difficulty thinking. Uh, from the from the alcoholic liver disease. It's good times, alcoholic liver disease, and uh, you don't want it. Hey, Hitler, I'm a 19-year-old Hispanic male. Being Hispanic, I eat a lot of beans and a lot of fiber. I just noticed that I have to, when I have a really good feeling or bad smelling fart, what's a good feeling fart? My gooch tends to hurt for about 30 to 45 seconds afterwards. I was wondering what's going on and if I should get it checked out. Thank you. Piss on me, beat me, keep them high and tight. So um, it can be a number of things that could be the, remember the pubococcygeus muscle spasm you guys have heard me talk about, right? How could we forget? All right, that can be triggered by stuff like this. Sometimes uh, diverticuli, you're 19, so you're not likely to have diverticuli down there. Sometimes it's kind of referred pain because, you know, um, believe it or not, uh, you know, bad smelling farts can be, there's the PC muscle, there it is. Bad smelling farts can be sort of inflammatory. They can be sort of in, in causing a little inflammation down along the, the the rectal area, and that could be referred to you your as you say gooch. Hey, here's a diverticulitis question. Mm. Forty one years old, been suffering from diverticulitis since twenty one July twenty one. Two attacks, six months apart. Each time, as you know, the pain is unbearable. I'm constantly worried about come back. I'm with you, man. I feel the same way. I'm thinking about surgery. I wanted your thoughts about the procedure. How safe is the surgery, recovery time, chance it may come back? I believe it's hereditary. Yep, mom at 71 has it. She is scheduled for surgery. Worried about her as well because at her age and her prior history was C. difficile. Great, so she can't, the antibiotics have a whole issue with her with the C. diff. And uh, information would be greatly appreciated. Mike from Arizona. Did he say how old he was? 41. Mm. So he's a little young to be getting these attacks very frequently, but it happens. You know, three attacks in a year, they start talking about surgeries for sure. Uh, it, it is usually in from the same location. There's usually one culprit is really causing you all the problems. Uh, you certainly can get on the antibiotics, flagell and ciprofloxacin or flagell and augmentin, depending on what works for you. And if the attacks don't resolve quickly, you are sort of heading towards surgery there. There, you know, you want to make sure there's not, you may want to get a CAT scan to make sure there's not something going on like an abscess, like, like, uh, Nadav had, you can talk to him about how fun that was. 
It was the best. Yeah. <laughs> and for you, the surgery, how long did it take to recover from the surgery? Mm, like, I mean, because it took about like a week in the hospital to mm. even diagnose what was happening. Mm -hmm. Like it took a year to a year and a half of my life away from me where it was just recovering from inflammation wow. and then doing the surgery and then recovering from inflammation from the surgery. It's a pretty good size surgery. It can often be done with a scope or a robot. Um, right, but yeah, I got the arthroscopy. Yep, so well, the laparoscopy. That's it. A and it can it can recur, not recur so much as, because they'll take the whole area of colon out that, that's got the diverticuli. It, it's really definitive. But there's a 2 to 20% chance of leakage at the ast anastomosis, it's called, where, the, where they put the colon back together, it can start to leak and pull apart. And that buys you another surgery where they do a colostomy. And then a few months later, another surgery where they put you back together. And uh, I don't know, um, as my gastroenterologist said, as I talked to her about that, I was thinking about surgery. She said, it's an ongoing conversation. And I thought that is exactly right. The because the diverticulitis is awful. But if you can figure out a way to get it under control now, by the way, you know, there's all kinds of dietary recommendations on diverticulitis, avoiding seeds, avoiding, you know, kernelly things, um, nuts, that kind of stuff. But newer research suggests that it's really more about rectal pressures. Uh, in other words, if there, if you can keep, if you can sort of get that right, like keep evacuating properly, uh -huh. it may put less pressure upstream at the diver uh, on the diverticuli, so they don't leak as likely. What if you put stuff up there? No, no, no. Don't. I don't think putting stuff up there is a good idea. That's pressure. Yeah. Here's something more. Uh, Booth boys, doctor. This is Ray, 22 from the Mid East. I don't know what that means. I think he means Mid East, United States. Uh, the Middle East. I don't know. We didn't say Middle East. He said Mid East. Anyway, Did you say what his name was. Uh, Ray does not sound like a Middle Eastern name. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe a pedicle. I have a mass or a twisted spermatic cord directly above, but not on my left testicle. The right vein or cord seems regular to touch the mass or whatever on the left is about half an inch around, and maybe a little less. God, he's like giving me weird specifications that I can't quite picture what he's talking about. Uh, I wonder if it may be all the falcon punches and flying kicks to the balls as a young adolescent could have anything to do with this. Recently, recently after I found it, I started getting sharp pains every now and then. Uh-oh. Highly embarrassed. Talk to doctors about it. Don't know what to do. Uh, Ray, these are very, 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 very common things. Uh, it, I don't quite know what you're describing. A smooth round thing is usually like a cystocele or a spermatocele or a varicocele. Uh, and yeah, those are common and they can be drained. They do tend to come back. Sometimes they need to be surgically taken care of. If you have a lot of pain, they can sometimes affect fertility, but the fact that you described it as a vein, if it feels more like a bag of worm, those are sort of varicocele. Those are varices. Those are just enlarged veins that occur kind of upstream towards the groin and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Doctors are used to seeing all kinds of things in the testes. And if you go to your a urologist, that's about all they're doing all day is uh, feeling stuff like that. So go see a urologist. Uh, you should get, take care of that. Maybe it's time for some videos. What do you think? Where are we in the clock here? Yeah. 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 We got, we're about halfway through the show. How about some TikToks? Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Can't wait. Eh, malo bieline. Pozdrav iz Tirola. Malo snijeg pao. What is she doing? Super. That's it? Yep. It's just a... A Russian dude and his wife waving at us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're trying to figure out TikTok, I think. All right. And they nailed keep, it. Keep going. They nailed it. I, I would watch that all day. Or never I'm so again. glad somebody asked this question about paper types and particularly oh God, I've seen this guy. Bible paper. Which this guy is, is amazing. Pretty much makes me want to vomit. <laughs> Wait, you like him now? I like him. I like this guy. You've you never did. shown me him before. Yeah, we did. You didn't like him the first time. Well, what was he talking about? He was talking about how to take a book from a bookshelf. You're like, you should be pushing from the back and from the front. You're oh, like, I do. Remember hey, that man, guy. fuck you. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. I don't. I was in a bad mood, but uh, but. <laughs> But this guy is so I I I didn't realize it was the same guy, but I was I have flipped onto this guy occasionally on Twitter, TikTok, and he gets you know I learned something from the guy about you know ancient books and how they're how the paper is cut and how they're bound and why they are the way they are and it's just crazy shit that I can't believe anybody knows. But this guy does. Does he have more to say? 
Yeah. All right. I'm so glad somebody asked this question about he is irritating types, and particularly so-called yeah. Bible paper, which yeah. is a term that pretty much yeah. makes me want to vomit. Me too. Okay. Paper used to be rag paper. It was made with most often a cotton or potentially cotton. hemp blend, and it could be really crispy. Ooh, or it could actually that. be quite supple and flimsy. And Jesus. if you look at it, you can see the texture within that paper. Okay. Yeah, not very well. That declares it as rag paper. It actually feels like a, a dollar bill. How much more are we going to talk and about And it this? was strikingly lightweight. Antiquarian see, no, books are actually shockingly light. There's two minutes left in this. No, I thank it. you. No, thank <laughs> you. you. This guy. <laughs> well, I don't like him for this show. I mean, I, I, in a weird moment, I might sit there and listen to him. I might. I really might. Um, I'm, I'm weird about, you know, facts and, and trivia and stuff like that. But uh, let's move on. He's very irritating. Ugh, he doesn't belong. Uh-oh. 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 Is he farting? I think he's trying to. Oh my god! Actually, I think he did. I thought I heard something like that. I, I... yeah, he's uh, Christina really likes this guy. Is is there? Does he do more stuff? I imagine this guy's very it's, colorful. It's mainly just this lane. It's just sitting and farting with the with the bare hairy weird fat chest. Uh, the chest I think is the thing that's not as frequent. It's the really trying very hard to fart is the is the lane that he's in. Wow, people will do. Well, I, Hold how, on, you like this guy more than the book guy, huh? I, I, well, I'm no, no, I'm, I'm just amazed that there's a lane that people watch with this guy in it. See, I told like, you, man. I'm, I'm telling you. Now, tell me now that content is the everybody's move, crazy. Is what you're saying? No, I'm saying that everyone is is doing some random thing because everything's been done now. So the only thing you can do is crazy fucking shit for for, for attention. Content, for, but but yeah, but but the more the original. But there's sort of many layers of incredulity in my head. One was, oh my God, somebody will watch this. I, w I would as flip back as fast as I could if I came across this because it would just, Ugh. but then the fact that people need attention so badly that they would do this, like who is this guy in real life? I mean, he's got some expensive sheets behind him, right? I'm sure Christina made note of that. He's got nice eyewear on. This guy was somebody's Dad, accountant, right. lawyer. Like he's a retiree. Definitely. Uh, like he's he lived a life, you know. I mean, and now he's just farting while he's. Retired. I mean, and and doesn't that invalidate whatever else he was for? I mean, <laughs> does it? You know what I mean? If this guy had a meaningful life, isn't it now gone? And doesn't he think it's gone? I don't know. Is there more with this guy? I imagine his follower account doesn't say so. Oh my God. Is there more? No, nah, that's all we got of him. You know, I still go back to the vomiting chick on a regular basis and, and laugh my ass off. Still, what's yeah, wrong you, with me? You really like that. Yeah, you're crazy, Doug. Right? So maybe there's people that, so I like the chick sort of gagging, vomiting almost. And then maybe there are people that like this the same way? 100%. Uh, 100%. Now I feel dirty. I feel terrible. It's just like so they a, sit and laugh at it the way I laugh at that chick. I mean, I I imagine like it's just so extreme, you know. It's such an extreme like vibe that I feel like it's gotta fucking work for someone. And, and it makes know? him look like some sort of cartoon character of a frog or something, right? Right, right. Like Which he's is part of the thing, right? Combed his chest hair into like a turtleneck. Type uh, of vibe. Didn't see that, right? but thank like you. He's, like he's putting attention into, you, into that uh, chest hair, right? They're all flowing the same the, way. Here's the crazy question. Does somebody have a sexual response to this? That's the crazy of question. Of course. <gasps> There's always. No. This is like a classic bear. There's people that are into bears. <laughs> yeah. There's always You some. better believe I'll be coming up in May. <laughs> yep, he's one of them. Ed Asner. So do you think, do you think other bears like this like looking at him? I think I think there's guys. I think there's girls. Like I girls. Think, yeah. Totally. Heather, get on the horn here. Mm. Get, get, help me out here. <laughs> Heather, would you fuck this guy? <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to ask her that. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask her. Are, are those guys on to anything that a a female would be sort of intrigued by this, other than Christina Pino, uh, and or would have any sort of uh, attractive response? Is that what we're sort of saying? Come on, Heather. Wait, I can't hear you. Definitely not. Not. Thank you. Yeah. yeah women were hard pass. Okay. So. So. Thank you. And so. So the fact now. The does the evocation of disgust 
does that you think any women would kind of play with that at all in themselves like they like evoking that in themselves i mean i'm sure there's women out there that that are into that really yeah disgust i know some i'm sure men are into it men are into everything but I always think women just, they, they don't go all the way to the fringe the way men do. Women are just as freaky. They're just better at hiding it. Oh, that is for sure. Thank you for that, yeah. Heather. Heather's our new favorite person. And, <laughs> and so, but but I think in this day and age, most women will sort of admit it. Well, what is Christina like in this thing? Just, she likes the oddity, right? Just the, the extremeness of it. Yeah, she just yeah. likes that it's insane. It's so insane. Like yeah. all of her other talks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, thank you, Heather. That was that was uh, important. You be- got it. Believe it or not, that was actually an important point. All right, let's go to the next talk. Or if there's more of this guy, I, I would love to see that. Hi, I got a couple things to talk about you real quick tonight. Uh, to talk with you. Um, you know, I think I've told you this before, but a little helpful hint. If you get crabs, okay, uh, don't panic. Uh, don't call your doctor in the middle of the night. I had to do that years ago. My gynecologist said, and it works, bug spray. You have bug spray in your cabinet. No. Spray down that little puppy. No. Takes care of it. Take a shower. It's gone. Okay? Wow. So just a little helpful hint there. Uh, save you some time and some money on a prescription or whatever. Uh, you know, another thing, uh, TikTok's good for venting. Something I wanted to talk about real quick. All right. Last guy I was dating. Of okay, course. missionary. It's fine the best easiest you know uh whatever you like but he's on top of me like dead weight mm. i don't know D- normally uh they pull themselves up on their legs and their arms I, you know this was dead <laughs> weight do. i know part of it's my age probably part of it's my weight hey you know it's shoulder pain me? man you know, what I are you know. gonna do uh but, arthritis uh, in his shoulders i don't remember that ever happening before and i don't know and he wasn't a fat guy i mean i, I don't I don't know if it was him What's or was it me. You know, has that happened to you? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just curious about that. Uh, one more thing, too, oh. guys. Something I wanted to tell uh, you: if you're dating, more. okay, especially if you're older, yeah, like I am in dating, okay. Sometimes, uh, you know, a little helpful hint. I think whining and dining. It's a form of foreplay. Okay, that's yeah, how women she, see it. She's right. It's a form of foreplay. She is right. Uh, what I mean by that is, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Yep. But especially if you like her and you think she's liking you, you know, uh, even a cup of coffee, yep. uh, iced tea, yes. you going out, uh, do that. It leads up to, if you like each other, it leads up to it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Because she's right. the, the thing, your place or mine, what's your address? Right away, don't do that. Especially with older women. I, I, <laughs> most women, I'm saying, I think it's a big turn off. You know, lead up Depends to it. Depends who the guy bit. is, probably. You know, even if you spend five dollars for some iced tea and all a tip. All right, all right, enough of this. You trip. know, enough of this woman. So, so, all right, but but I used to always say this. I would say that that when women complain, we need more foreplay. You have to be very explicit with men. We don't even know what you're talking about. You think we understand what that means? We do not. And usually, women that are complaining, they need more foreplay. Are need men to understand that they're talking about initially dinner. That really is part of foreplay. And I've never heard a woman really spell it out quite that clearly. So good for her for doing that. She's absolutely right about that. Uh, bug spray will cause uh, horrible stuff, particularly on your testes, which is a highly absorptive tissue. Uh, do not spray bug spray. Uh, there are very specific medications for this, and it's it's a shampoo. It's very easy to take care of. No big deal. Now, what if it's the difference between Raid and like mosquito repellent? Both are, are no? One's a repellent and one's a poison. The repellent is not going to do anything. And crabs tend to get through everything. I, Adam Carolla had a story once where one of his roommates got crabs. And so they took one of the crabs, put it on the uh, counter, the sink counter in the bathroom, and dropped ammonia on it. And it just kind of walked right out. You know, and then they tried other household cleaners and things. It just kind of walked right through it. No problem. Yeah, they're, they are hardy creatures. What about like a tomato juice bath type deal? No, 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 no. No, that's that's for smell from skunk. Yeah. That's no, no, no. That no. is where I got it from. No, uh, but but here's the deal. There, there's something else occurs to me with this woman. There are so many damn old people now, and this generation of which I'm kind of a part of, uh, grew up during the so-called sexual revolution, and are very much sort of uh, expecting to keep being sexually active until they can't move anymore, and so we're seeing a lot more. Older folks talk more explicitly about sex. And my question is, is that weird? Is that a problem for you guys? 
Because it's weird for me to look at her doing that. For like, you mean like us and my generation? Yeah. No. I mean, it's not weird. No. Do you guys like it? Yeah, I want you guys to fuck. That's no, not cool. that you want us to fuck, but the, that goes without saying. Oh. But but you want us sort of talking about it the way, you know, sort of, you know, do you want to be pfft, reminded of it all the time? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so it's no problem. Bo- yeah, it doesn't bother So it's no yeah, problem. You, you yeah. pick and choose the, the advice that you like. Well, and it's not the advice. Is that isn't it? it I, I have a little bit of discomfort looking at it. It's like let's let's put it this way: when I was your guy's age, to you know, think of the like, look at the actresses on the Love Boat that were fifty and sixty years old. Uh, you would never find those women ever even hinting that they were still sexual. Or let's see, those are all their current cast members. Uh, no, no, I'm not even talking about the. Um, I love about uh, guest stars. The guest stars. Let's talk about it. guest stars older. <laughs> Adam and I have been doing deep deep dives on the, even the, like yeah that woman like would that think that woman would ever talk about her sexuality? It's like no way. Not on camera. And, and by look at go down to Olivia de Havilland there in the middle with the, in the circle, she's probably 55, 60 years old there. She's, this lady fucks. Yeah, yeah. She fucks hard. Yeah, but no way would she ever talk about it ever. Like she pretended it just didn't happen. She, she probably and she was probably pretending that when she was twenty five. So my generation was sort of exposed to that. So to see older people talking about it more explicitly gives us, even though it's our peers, you get a weird discomfort from it. It's interesting. Not interesting to you guys, evidently. All right, let's get another voicemail. <laughs> no, I just so, think it's it's like I mean, yeah. dude, the whole fucking YMH damn uh, universe knows yeah. about like. I know what they know All about with our life. All of my fucking yes, It's like, I come know. on. You yeah, know, people fuck, dude. I yeah, know. No, no, I know. No, it's not. It's it's the, I, I guess what I'm pointing at is people sort of 75 and above kind of talking about it. People that look old. I mean, some people look young so long these days that it, it's just, oh, it's another age, but they're still kind of young and living the same kind of life. When people actually look like they're aged, and they're still talking about it. That that's what I'm talking about. I don't know. I think I think I like it because I think I that, like it. Don't get me well, wrong. Because the feeling that comes me. over me when I hear when I see stuff like that, yeah. I'm like, fucking get it, girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm with you hundred percent that way. A hundred percent. But I, I just didn't know if there was any discomfort with it in terms of like it striking you odd. Okay, no, good. The, the good. only discomfort good. is if you are gross. Yeah. So if we have you're... completely fucked your generation up. It's good. We've done it. We've done it. Me and my boyfriend of three years have been intimate for around one year now, and everything was fine. Of course, small amounts of pain here and there. Never thought it was a big deal. Recently, with new positions such as doggy, I'm having so much pain, we had to stop. I always attributed the pain to the fact that he has a large penis. Either way, I figured he was just too big or something. I'm small, but I had a friend tell me it isn't normal. Now I'm concerned. Could it? She said it could be a lubricant problem. Mm. But we do a lot of foreplay. I'm very wet. It still hurts. The most recent time we had sex... When he exited, there was a large amount of brown discharge. I was scared. It was blood. That is blood. A couple of days later, it came back and it freaked me out. So over a week before my period, I never had any spotting. You're always just on time. I'm worried. Is there anything I can do to help? Okay. Also, the pain feels very deep and stabby, of course. Keep my hand tight. Uh, yeah. The, the, look, when you have pain, it's called dyspareunia when you have pain with intercourse. The fact that you have blood coming back should tell you that it's something's going on in your uterus. You can have cervicitis, inflammation of the cervix that the penis hits up against, and that causes discomfort. He could have traumatized the region with the big penis. You can actually trauma. You can traumatize any part of your body. He could have. Inf- you could have infection in the tubes or in the or in the uterus. You could have endometriosis. You could have ovarian cysts. You could have all kinds of things that are very common and need you need to get checked out. Go get a pelvic exam. For goodness sake, what is going on? Help me. 25-year-old, been in a relationship with this girl for six years. We basically lived together the whole time. I would say the relationship was rushed. Okay. She has trauma. Mother died when she was in her teens. She needed her dad the most. He bailed, completely abandoned her. My question is, is there any literature that has to do with this kind of trauma? Yes, it's called abandonment literature. I would appreciate any advice. We are not together anymore, but still live together. Ugh, I would like to show my support by offering resources. Any help? She needs therapy. Look, you, you, you reading about this is not going to help her with her abandonment feelings. She needs intensive psychotherapy. She has maybe unresolved grief. She has abandonment issues. You know, the dad that would behave like that already was sort of traumatizing, I'm sure. So you got to have therapy. That you got to get her to a professional support. That is that's going to be your what do you call it? Uh, you want to re- show your support, show your support by offering, you know, supporting her getting into treatment, reading about abandonment. 
I mean, <laughs> Pia Melody talks about abandonment and enmeshment, sort of two sides of the of the coin that cause uh, for various kinds of psychopathology. Um, gosh, I mean, abandoned is one of the more common traumas out there. So any trauma literature, um, Alan Shore, Peter Fonicky, um, any of those guys, you know, uh, oh, um, guy named Lou Cozzolino writes a lot of good stuff on this stuff. You might read his stuff. All right. What else you got there for me to see? More TikToks. Yeah. I got yeah. a couple more for you. So today, Ooh, oh no. we're about to cook some hog toenails. What? Now, don't knock them till you try them, but they is in the worm family. I will give you that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is put them in the refrigerator so that they'll they'll slow down and stop moving as much. Oh, my God. Okay, see, now they're nice and sl slowed down. Oh, my God. They're barely moving. Okay. Let's put some pepper. You want to be very generous with the seasonings. Pepper. Yeah, because they taste like shit. Just some salt. Oh, my goodness. Next, get a pan on medium heat. Add some olive oil. Good amount. Put the lid on and let them cook for about 15 minutes on medium. You got to flip them halfway. Okay, now they're all done. It's got a really creamy texture. Jeez. And it tastes sort of like a mixture of like lobster and like maybe like caviar or something because it's really, all really right. salty. He's, I'm, but I'm convinced. pretty tasty. All right. I mean, you want to try that, Drew? I, the way he's describing him, I think I would actually. I'd try it at but least twice. What is a hog toe? Let's look that up. What is, I mean, that's not, it can't be from this country, and yet hog toe sounds so Southern American. You said hog toe nail, right? Hog toe nail, yeah, hog toe nail. Yeah, hog toe nail. So weird, hog toe nail. Worms. Eh. Oh, now we got, oh, there they are. But look, I think that's from the TikTok. Oh. <laughs> uh, the, the guy says they are hog toe nails, but Google gives me nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, and is the is he? Uh, um, why you should never? Mm. That guy's from Brazil. Oh, that's under the toenail. That's actually that's something just horrible. about toenails. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I guess right. they're Can't, not Google, called that. Google gives me nothing. <laughs> wow, interesting. I just think like I I can't imagine that's from this country, right? They seem like they're so exotic. You'd think they'd be from South America or Africa or something where there's jungles. I don't know. Very weird. Okay, got any more TikToks? Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite tattoo on your body? Uh oh. <laughs> so my dick is sleeved out. So that's probably my favorite tattoo. Awesome. I have three lightning bolts underneath. Uh. I have a curvy dagger on the side. I have a curvy arrow on this side, a full Wi-Fi signal at the root, and then a centipede all the way to the head. Ew. I like that you use your finger as an example. Ew. <laughs> so let, look, look at how he's blacked out his arms and his head, face and head. Yeah, some John Mayer arms, huh? Yeah. John Mayer did that? I think so. Yeah, I think he blacked out his sleeves. So, so they black him out when they don't like him, right? Like they don't like what's on there, and so they just cover them. Uh, it's the opposite. It's, it's like a look. It's a look, but it's it's usually motivated by uh, these tattoos are shit. I'm, but then, possibly. like, if you take a look at his face, though, do you think he just made a whole bunch of mistakes on his face? Uh, usually, there's swastikas or something under there. <laughs> that, that's what I'm thinking. Like, like I mean, to have get the, he's got sort of gang stuff on him, so you're thinking, you know, maybe in prison, and people would do extreme tattoos in prison, and then uh, they want to get rid of it. Except he, what is on his head is just sort of just designs, right? There's nothing really there we can see. Yeah, it's just like tribal looking stuff. Oof. And uh, there's a, a addendum. There's a correction. John Mayer does not have blacked out sleeves. I didn't think so. Who yep. who does? Uh, I can't remember. I, I mean, all not right, John anyway. Mayer. That's all I could really Enough. say. <laughs> and that's inked is the name. It's from the show inked. Do we think? Uh, maybe it's a magazine. Ink. All right, all right. What else you got? No more TikToks? Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, I've seen this guy. This guy scares the shit out of me. Because he, he doesn't... It's, it's, a, it's a liger, right? It's not even a lion or a tiger. They're, and they're, I think, worse, right? They get bigger? And yeah, they're, they're bigger. They is this gigantic. guy dead? Has he been eaten by this thing yet? Uh, I think he's still putting out content, so not yet. Wow. That poor animal. And the guy's an asshole, right? 
I can't tell. It looks like he's treating him well. Well, that's for sure. But if they, I think he's it, an asshole because that liger exists. You're not supposed to make him. You're right. Liger exists, <laughs> right. and he's against God. And, yeah. and by the way, <laughs> um, making him live indoors and be his buddy, it's sort of. Uh, yeah, it's anyway. pretty clear that. And why, you know, why do the big cats always attract such sociopathic shitheads? Because they're the king. You know what I mean? I mean, think about the, the whole the whole phenomenon of of Joe Exotica and all the guys around him. The, all the if you watch that series, everybody in that series has got like like some serious personality problems, right? I mean, Joe may be the least of all of them. Poor Joe's got prostate cancer. I talked to him. Did I tell you that? Uh, no. I talked to him. I tried to help him out to get some treatment for his prostate cancer. He's getting a lot of restriction uh, in terms of access to the kinds of care he ought to be getting. Oh, no. Did you, uh, yeah. did he have, like, how that, is he going to get the surgery? I, I, he, I don't think so. It, it's sort of external beam radiation, I think, is all they offered him. And he might need, they might, or he can, you know, he can go on active surveillance and stuff. He does not have a, I, I'm not going to give any specifics, but but he um, couldn't be a nicer guy to talk to. i tell you what, it's just it's exactly who you expect him to be. You're like, hey man, you can still come like a rock star. I do. No, nah, I just went through the treatment for him and uh, helped him advocate for what he should be getting. That's all, because they're they're really not treating him right. And he's not wrong that they're mistreating him in, in prison. So let's talk about going numb during anal. Uh, my name is Ryan. I'm 25 year old male who enjoys butt stuff from time to time. I've never done it with my partner until recently. My wife used our dildo on me while suckling my snake. To my surprise, I had to stop because my hands, face, chest, and stomach started tingling and going numb. Once I figured out I wasn't having a heart attack, I blew the largest load of my life, but I was still numb all over for about five minutes. Just wanted to know if that was normal if I was dying. Um, you know, it's interesting. The, the guys that like this really like it, and guys that don't like it really don't like it. So don't don't try to turn one guy into the other. They are different dudes. And this Girls guy... Too. Same thing. Same with girls. Yeah, the ones that really like it, like really like it. And they'll let you know. And same with the men. They will let you know if they like this. And this is a guy that discovered this and likes it. Now, Ryan, um, here's the thing about the numbness and tingling. There's sort of three potential causes. One is hyperventilation. You might have been breathing. Um, you, don't have to, you don't have to be panting to be hyperventilating. You essentially only need about one or two more breaths per minute to really start to get tingling around the, around the mouth, toes, uh, fingers, and, and mouth. Uh, the other thing is low blood pressure. You put something in the in the rectum and your blood pressure may drop a little bit. But in that same category, a sort of autonomic um, activation or hyperactivation, and that can also result in tingling and stuff all over the body. So, uh, pr- you know, slowing the heart rate down, probably slowing the heart rate down is probably the biggest thing. And uh, yeah, you can faint. That's also what you got to watch out for. So uh, be careful in and around that activity. Did we ever talk about Heather McDonald's fall and Bob Saget and all that stuff? It was a while ago now, but did we ever talk about it? Sounds familiar. I may sure maybe next show yeah. I'll show you a video um, I'll have you put up about passing out because I, I actually this this is actually a public service announcement. I I am concerned about people passing out after COVID and after the COVID vaccine. And as far as the vaccine goes, I don't mean right after the vaccine. I mean a couple of weeks after the vaccine. I've seen a lot of what's called syncope, which is people passing out. And it's been pretty profound. I, I'm fearful that's what happened to uh, Bob Saget. I know it did happen to my friend Heather McDonald, comedian. I'm, I will show you her video next show. Um, but it's something to kind of – if you if you feel dizzy after you've had COVID – or lightheaded even, if you had COVID or after the vaccine, up to maybe three weeks afterwards, please lay down, especially if you're driving a car, get off the road. I'm seeing a lot of people faint. Voicemail. Hey, Hitler. My name is Jen, and um, I have been with my husband for about 17 years. Mm -hmm. Um, My husband, I think, is one of the rare people that are asexual. Uh Uh-oh. He does not touch me. Um, I've had one orgasm with him in the past 17 years. We have no children. He took away all of those years of my life. Ooh. He swears he's not gay. I've never, ever caught him looking at uh, gay porn. Mm-hmm. I've never caught him jerking off. He just does not touch me. I'm wondering what the percentage of asexual people there are out there in the world. You may go, oh, he's gay. 
No, no. Mm, like I said, I've never caught him jerking off or looking yeah, at porn. No, 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 I'm not saying that. Uh, I, I know he's not cheating on me because we both work from home. We have one car. We're always together. And I'm just curious what your thoughts are because I'm beyond frustrated and yeah. depressed. No, I'm sorry. Thanks, Gene. It's, it's really, it's sad because it's an example of how important sexual and physical intimacy is for people to feel close to their partner. And that is throughout the lifespan, as we were talking about with that uh, older young, older young lady. Um, but uh, let's look it up. What is the incidence of asexual, identified asexuals? I don't know that number. I'm going to guess it's under 1%. Um, but here's my concern and while we're looking it up make sure he has a medical evaluation. Uh, first of all, if he has low testosterone, that can be associated with degeneration of his bones, decalcification and, and fractures in the bone. If he has a pituitary tumor that's suppressing his testosterone, that something that needs to be taken care of. I mean, he needs a thorough endocrinologic evaluation just to see if there's not a biological explanation for this. In this, it says uh, estimated 1.7 percent of sexual minority adults identify. What does that mean, sexual minority adults? Uh, I think just adults that are. I don't know what that uh, means. Uh, so 1.7 percent identify as asexual. Is that LGBT. That's the that Williams that study. Uh, sexual minority adults. I think that means LGBT. That's what I think. I, so I think it's amongst people. Uh, let's see, compared to non. Uh, I've got the damn camera up in front of it. Compared to non, thank you, asexual, lesbian, gay men, bisexual adults. Yeah, so LGBT, QIA, yeah, yeah. all that shit, yeah. Okay, the study found that asexuals are more likely to be women or gender, non-binary assigned female at birth, and younger compared to non-asexual. Okay, so yeah, asexual, let, let's be clear, it exists. I, don't don't get me wrong, it, it exists, and, and, I, it, and your husband sort of fits that profile. Uh, but I always get very concerned when people go, Hey man, I just identify that way. It's like, yeah, maybe, but, but the biology is so powerful in the human. We got to make sure there's not some pathology creating that asexuality. And if there's not a pathology and it is your genuine identification, good, that's fine. Good on you. But don't just jump to it, especially in males, especially as you see, mostly it's in, mostly in females. <sighs> I was going to say too, I mean, it should be a real good indicator of, you know, where this relationship is going to go if <coughs> you're the only one who has a problem with it. Sounds like he doesn't have an issue with that. Right. So if it's not, he's not going to go to the doctor and be like, is there anything? Yeah, but he needs to go. He, I swear to God, he needs to go. I bet it's okay for him though. So it's like. I mean, uh, it is think, okay to him, but I'm I'm saying he he may present with a, a compression fracture in his spine at, at 65 and then it's not going to be okay with him. You know what I'm saying? You you don't get to yes, it's okay that you're asexual when you're feeling asexual, but the the medical context may be quite relevant to him. That's all I'm saying. Maybe starting with some couples counseling or something. No, no, I mean no. Let him be asexual if he needs to be asexual. But no, but I mean she seems to be oh, super she, frustrated. I you know uh yeah, that's an incompatibility. Like that, like, right yeah, there. that that it's, fucking it's, sucks. It, it's an incompatibility. It's exactly right. I don't know what therapy is going to do for that. Well, I mean maybe like he doesn't even realize how much of an issue it is. 20, okay. He says 17 years and I know. one orgasm. I know. Good for yeah. her for hanging in there. My God. Well, I'd say it, not good for okay. Her. Yeah, I'd say a fucking fuck bail. Well, don't that bitch. <laughs> listen, and did you hear what she said? She wanted to have children, and he, quote, took all that away from me. It's like, oh, God. Yeah, she is so, resentful. So, yeah, I mean, that would not be a bad idea to see a few sessions just so we're sure he's hearing her. And we're sure also there's not something else going on psychiatrically that makes him indifferent. To the her suffering, the, the, okay, all right, couples therapy, that's all right with me. Again, when when I think about couples therapy, though, I always, you know, people jump to it so readily, I'm, and I'm always like, well, we got to be thinking, what is it we want to achieve here? What what's the goals? And I think there's some goals there. Uh, hi, mommy. This is a good brown question here. Why do some farts feel hotter than others? Mm. Why? How long have I been here? Nobody's ever asked that question. That's a good uh, question. Why do hot farts always smell the worst? Right? Do they? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Go Signed, on. farting in Fargo. <laughs> I love this person. Um, it is the same, essentially the same thing that causes the feeling of heat in your mouth, right? Except when that stuff gets to the other end, the bacteria have worked on it quite a bit in some individuals, and it can create really nasty smells and heat. Heat in your mouth. Capsaicin, uh, spicy foods feel oh, kind of... So, so you're saying hot sauce makes smelly farts? In some people. 
and heat and sense of heat too. And so it's that same kind of phenomenon. It's also irritating. As I said earlier, we were talking about diverticulitis. We we're talking about something and, and bad farts. And uh, oh, he's talking about, I think it might have been yesterday, the last show even. Um, his taint, his gooch, he said, got inflamed. And that's because it, it, it has a inflammatory component to it in some people. Not in everybody. Some people's bacteria just take take care of it. I'm guessing any has no problems as such. You guys want to dump on Annie's dumping? Here's an advantage to it. Am, am I right, Any? Damn right. See? I don't have cold farts. I don't have hot farts. I don't have farts. I'm not to worry about it. So You yeah. fart. His colon all fill up with the shit, man. There ain't no, no room for anything else. Bodied. There's just no room. Bodied. This has been so many good things. I've got all kinds of stuff. We're going to have to put this off till next show. Thank you all for the voice messages, the emails, 818-253-1693 for the voice messages and drafterdark at gmail.com for these great emails and store.ymhstudios.com for all the great merch. And uh, yeah, keep these emails coming. And by the way, if there's the sort of general topics you want to get me to get to, you know what I mean? You don't, I, I like it when it's attached to a, a, a case, like you're asking questions that's important to you because you're suffering from it. But if there's something you feel like we didn't get to or you want us to get to, put it out there in a voice message or an email and uh, we will get to it. Thank you all. We'll see you next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.